about my final piece, my masterpiece, and it will always be a check. Amen? Amen? And it just so happens that in this realm, where Christ is, where God is, where the Holy Spirit is, Satan cannot access this realm. The Bible does speak of there are heavenly realms where Satan can access in the spiritual, in the spiritual realm, but the eternal realm, the, 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 there is a place where Satan cannot touch. He cannot touch. He cannot go near. This place is hidden from him. Mm -hmm. Think about this. The Bible says when we are speaking in tongues, we are speaking mysteries. Where are these mysteries coming from? This realm. Amen. We are speaking mysteries that go way above the plans of the enemy in this realm. He doesn't know what it is. It confuses him. He doesn't know what's coming. And also, it can materialize in this realm. No. So, the reason why I want us to be aware of these three different realms, the eternal realm, what God is, the spiritual realm, and also the uh, physical realm, is... It's God's desire for us to learn, to know how to live and function on earth, but from this realm. Amen. 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 Living from heaven to earth. Amen. Amen. That's God's desire. Because if we can learn to align our to align our perception with this reality, we can't lose. Amen. We cannot lose. It is impossible to lose. The enemy knows this, so he does his very best to keep us thinking this is all there is. I'm just body and flesh. Everything that is happening in the natural is. That's it. Yeah? Does that make sense? And this is a situation we have with, this, with, 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 with all what's going on. So, our enemy has made many plans to distort your perception of God's reality. Okay? By constantly flooding your physical senses with narratives from inferior realities that are embedded in the systems of this world, that are contrary to what God is, has said and what God is saying. Some of these narratives are just outright lies. For example, Genesis chapter 3 verse 4 to 6. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw with her natural eyes that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Up to this point, I'd like to say, creation was never designed to be the source of information for Adam and Eve. The source, how Adam and Eve knew how something was, was never by figuring it out from, the, from your physical senses. They knew things but through, through fellowship and intimacy with God. And out of that came forth the knowledge of God. That's why when Adam, when, when God saw Adam and Eve and he made, made, made all the animals, he brought all the animals to Adam and Eve for them, for Adam and Eve, for, for them to name the animals. You know? So immediately when Adam saw a giraffe, he instantly knew, hang on a minute, based on everything that, that is, this is a giraffe. He wasn't like, let's study it first, let's, let's, let's test it, let's use my natural understanding. Remember, lean on my own understanding. That's not how we function. That's why the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. What eating from the knowledge of good and evil did was it created an understanding that was separate from fellowship with God. It created another way of knowing things that was separate from communion and intimacy with God. Listen to this. Um, so after this, so it says, uh, but after, so after Adam and Eve listened to Satan's lies, a fruit in the physical realm, which they detected with their natural eyes, became desirable for gaining wisdom. Something in the physical became desirable for gaining wisdom, even though God had said, if you eat of this, you will die. 
Yeah? For something in the physical became desirable, gaining wisdom. And think about the, the world we live in. It's full of knowledge that's connected with, so for example, if you eat too much of this, this will happen. If you don't eat too much of this, this will happen. It's all based on, on the knowledge of what you perceive to be good or evil. Hmm? But there were, that, that didn't exist before then. Once Adam and Eve brought into the light, once Adam and Eve brought into the light and ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, listen to this, it gave Satan the legal right to use creation, everything in the physical realm, everything Adam and Eve could pick up with their senses, to become an alternative source of getting information. It gave them the right to, to manipulate and to cause what, what's happening here to become their way of knowing and, and, and perceiving whether something is. The Bible says their eyes were open so they could see in the physical sense, but at the same time their spiritual eyes became closed. And their spiritual eyes became closed. Listen to this, you know, in Genesis chapter 3 verse 10 to 11, you know, God is looking for Adam and Eve, you know, and and he said, Adam, Adam, where are you? And then Adam answers, he answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid, you never feared before, because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Where did you get this information from? I never said that. Who's now telling you this? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Where are you getting this information from? Anything that contradicts what God has said and what He is saying in the eyes of God is a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Anything that contradicts what God has said and what He is saying in His eyes, it's a lie. In the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 25, it says, They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worship and serve created things rather than the Creator who is forever praised. Many of us may be able to detect such lies, but if we keep feeding our hearts these lies, over time we will end up believing them. For as Hitler said, and I've said this a number of times, if you he knew that if you tell a lie a thousand times, it becomes in your, in, your, in, in your eyes, in your perception, the truth. Lies such as, and these lies often surface when things aren't going well. I've noticed this in my life. You know. <laughs> lies such as, you won't make it. Nothing ever works for you. Or in your mind, you might say, nothing ever works for me. You're not clever enough. You will, not, you will never marry. You will always be poor. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the trick is, these things can end up becoming your reality if you keep on thinking and confessing it with your mouth. These, these things can end up becoming your reality. Literally, your, you can invite them to become your reality as you keep on thinking them and saying them. And I, I just, I mean, the other day I was trying to fix something, it wasn't working, and I could just feel it on the inside. I, as it wasn't working, and I was trying, it wasn't working. That, that there's voices started speaking, you know? Things just don't work for me. <laughs> it never works for me. Where does that come from? The enemy is trying to inject as much light so that we can confess and invite what is an inferior reality to become our ultimate. Reality at times, should we say. However, so there are lies, and I decree and declare that every lie that you've been listening to be exposed and uprooted in the name of Jesus. May your heart and mind be flooded with the truth of God's word, because what God says about you is the ultimate word. And in Him you are a new creation, in Him you can do all things, in Him greater is He that is in you than He that is in the 
well. In Christ, you have the mind of Christ. You are the head. You're not the tail. You are born to succeed. You are patterned after Jesus Christ. His DNA is running through your veins. You, are, you have resurrection life inside of you and you cannot lose. You win every time because Christ is in you and, he, and you are in Christ as a new creation. This is your reality in Amen. Jesus' name. May your perception tune in and pick, pick up on these realities in the name of Jesus. So many of us, however, may be able to... I've just said that. Other narratives are... So there are other narratives. And these narratives are facts. Now, facts are governed by natural laws. For every truth carries facts. But not every fact carries truth. Mm -hmm. repeat that. Mm -hmm. Every truth carries facts, but not every fact carries truth. This goes to show that there are some facts that contradict what God has said and is saying. And it's the, and it's the facts that we may struggle with more than the lies. It's the facts. It's the facts to contradict the truth. For example, when you have a doctor telling you that you're sick, or you have a lump in your body, or you have a disease that you can feel, your physical, and, and your physical senses are flooded with pain, and to top it all off, a professional has confirmed that what you fear is what you're experiencing. That's a struggle. That's a struggle. The Bible even says that our struggle is not against flesh and blood. So, in the Christian life, life even though we might be here, it is possible to be in a struggle. It's possible. The Bible says and speaks of it. And Abraham's, I think Abraham's wife, she wasn't sick, but she was barren. And Romans chapter 4, verse 18 to 21 says, Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him. So shall your offsprings be. See, so he's in a situation here, and it says, Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact so he's able to face the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead, yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Amen. What a situation to be in. You've heard God say this, and you are here. You're barren. Your wife is barren. You're old and of age. But yet, you're in a situation where you are fully persuaded that even though there was all the evidence, all the facts are telling you it's not possible, you are fully persuaded that God has power. He was saying, that what is here is more powerful than what is here and what is here. And I choose to perceive what is here above what is here and what I feel here, what I sense here. How do you do it? We you know what? God helped him along the way. And he, he told him, and I, and I believe this is one key. God, in his former years, God told Abraham to change his name from Abraham, which means exalted father, to Abraham, meaning father of many nations. And Abraham obeyed. So for the years, Abraham went around introducing himself as the father of many nations. Even though his wife Sarah was barren and they were childless. Abraham's constant confession of what God had said his constant confession, in spite of people laughing at him, in spite of people saying, you're saying you're the father of many nations? Well, you don't even have a child. He constant, 
Hi, my name is the father of many nations. I'm the father of many nations. I'm the father of many nations. And, and they're, they're looking at him. They're looking at his wife. And they're looking at all the cattle and the goats and the chickens. And there's no children running around. And they're thinking, oh, okay. And he just kept saying, I'm the father of many nations. I'm the father of many nations. I'm the father of many nations. Abraham's constant confession of who God said he was is what strengthened him in his faith to believe that God has the power to do what he promised. Because I guarantee you, the enemy's plan for Abraham is his plan for us. What's that? Let's flood Abraham and Sarah's physical senses with contrary evidence from the inferior reality of the physical realm until they identify more with this inferior reality until they begin to accept it as true with their words. But he did it because he kept saying, I'm the father of many nations. I'm the father of many nations. Because the enemy knows that way the inferior reality of the physical realm will rule them and they will remain barren. If Abraham was to change what he said, change what he was saying, change, and instead of saying the father of many nations, you, he, he would find that it's not his situation that would limit him, it was his words. But because his words were in line with God's word, the promise came to pass. And in your life, it's never your situation that limits you. It is your words. It is your words. It is not the situation, it's your words. Ask the 12 spies. Ten of them came back with a report saying, the giants are too big. We are not going to, we, we can't beat them. If only, if, if only God had caused us not to, 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 to stay in Egypt or to perish in the wilderness. And God said, by your words, you will have what you say. Because it was their words that we said. And there was two spies that said, if God is with us, if God is for us, we can take the land. Oh, and it was their words that led them because their words ran up with what God had said. Hallelujah. Oh, the enemy knows if he can keep, if he can get us to keep on thinking of other possibilities, contrary. If he can get you thinking of other possibilities, contrary to your in Christ reality, by flooding your physical senses with these possibilities. So that they can become a reality in your life if you start to speak them and if you start to confess them, then he's got you. But God's called us to live from who we truly are in Christ. Amen? Is that as opposed to living from your physical senses or how you feel or what's going on. Live from who you are in Christ. As new creations in Christ, Jesus is the one who we are created after. He is the one our new man is patterned after. He is the firstborn from among the dead. Jesus is God's son. And when he was on earth, he, when Jesus was on earth as a man, he perceived himself to be God's son in the spirit. And his perception lined up with his father's view of him. Amen? And as a result, the reality of who he was in the spirit is what his flesh recognized. And his flesh conformed to that. And it's what creation recognized. And creation conformed to him. And it's what demons recognized. And demons submitted to him. Because he knew who he was. Creation is part of him. Demons submitted. Amen? Amen. So as we hear more and more about what Christ accomplished for us through his redemptive work and his love for us, we also will begin to perceive ourselves to be God's Son in the same way Jesus is God's Son. Amen? Our perception will line up with our Father's view of us. And as a result, the reality of who we are in the Spirit is what our body 
will begin to conform to. It's what creation will begin to conform to. It's what demons will begin to submit to. It's, it will cause angels to serve us on earth the same way angels serve God in heaven. Why? Because God, when God made heaven and earth, He said, I have given man to rule over the works of my hand. Hallelujah. Guys, we are far more important than we think we are. Amen. We are far, far more important. Let's look a little deeper at what perceiving God's love for us will do. There is a knowing that leads to a feeling. 
There is a knowing in your heart that leads to the filling, the fullness of God inside of you. Amen. Amen. And it's like when the glory of the, imagine this, when the glory of the Lord filled the temple in the days of Solomon. Remember that? When the, the temple was, was offered. The, the Bible says the glory of the Lord filled the temple. We know the glory of the Lord resides in the Holy of Holies. But when it was dedicated, the glory of the Lord filled the whole place. Everywhere. It was so thick that no one could even enter in. In the same way, the love of God can fill every part of your being and body. Jesus, when he was on earth, he saw his body as a temple. He said, if you, if you destroy this temple after three days, I will raise it back. So you and I, we are, our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the same way Jesus' body was a temple, our body is a temple. And in the same way that the glory of the Lord filled the temple and the Holy Spirit, the love of God is so fill us that we, are, that we are full of the fullness of God within, that we, it is possible to experience God. Not here, but here, with your heart, with your mind, even with your physical body, it is possible to experience the measure and the, the presence of God. Amen. 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 The, the love of God is a dimension. It is literally a reality that you can actually experience and live from. And I'm saying, if you and I, if we can perceive the love that God has for you, you will begin to experience His love. And you will know from your heart how much He loves you. And God will fill you with His fullness. And as a result, listen, as a result, you will have an unshakable confidence and security in God no matter what is happening in the world. No matter what is happening in the physical realm. You will have a confidence. You will not be afraid. Hallelujah. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and you, another thing is, you will be free from fear. Because the Bible says, perfect love casts out all fear. Amen. Casts out all fear. And we live in an environment where the what's even worse than the coronavirus is the, the virus of fear. It is rampant everywhere, everywhere. Because people are so much people are listening to inferior realities, constantly feeding their, their hearts and minds, and they're not aware of this. They're not aware of this. Some believers may be, but they're constantly feeding their heart and mind with this. That in this realm, it is permission for fear, 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 fear. Fear, and because of the fear of death, the fear of this, the fear of rest, the fear, you are, it's, it's affecting everything. It's affecting your movement, it's, it's affecting your sleep, it's affecting your, you think the world is coming to an end. Psalms chapter 46 verse 1 to 5. God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams may plan the city of our God. Out of your belly, the Bible says, will flow rivers of living water. How is it that the same river that is there can come out of your belly? Because Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. Amen. Hallelujah. You can tune in and you can say, even though that is going on here, I can still rejoice. Instead of fearing, I can rejoice. Instead of fearing, I can rejoice and be joyful. Amen. Amen. The holy place where the most high God dwell, God is within her. God is within you. This is your reality. It starts. Hallelujah. She will not fall. You will not fall. And God will help her at the break of day. God will help you at the break of day. Amen. Identify with where you are in Him. Amen. Let the living water of life that makes glad the city, makes glad your body, makes glad your heart, be what comes out of you. Another benefit of perceiving the love of God 
is the natural ability to walk in love towards others because you have a revelation of God's love for you. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now I'm in my love. This, this surpasses the commandment of love your neighbor as you love yourself. Why? Jesus said, a new commandment I give. Get a revelation of God's love for you, and you'll be able to love your enemies. You'll be able to love anyone, because your reference point is how much God has loved. Amen. And also, learn to perceive God's love for you. De develop an understanding of your true value and your true worth within you. I'm telling you guys, the love of God is a reality you can perceive, you can experience, and you can live from. In the book of Jude, it says, remain in the love of God. Hallelujah. Remain in the love of God. Be built up in the love of God. Also, we can perceive, in this season, what we're perceiving the grace of Jesus. We spoke about the love, the love of God and the love of our Heavenly Father. But the grace, what will that do? I'm just going to just dabble into this. Maybe we'll talk more about this in the, in the, the Bible study this Friday. Please join us. It says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 3 to 6, Colossians chapter 1, reading from the Passion Translation, if you read it, it hangs it in. Colossians chapter 1, verse 3 to 6, it says this, Every time we pray for you, our hearts overflow with thanksgiving to Father God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have heard of your devoted lives of faith in Christ and your tender love towards all his believers. Your faith and love rise within you as you access all the treasures of your inheritance stored up in the heavenly realms. Listen to this. For the revelation of the true gospel <laughs> is revealed today as the day you first heard of our glorious hope. Now that you have believed in the truth of the gospel, this is the wonderful message that is being spread everywhere. Powerfully changing hearts throughout the earth. Just like it has changed you. Every believer of this good news bears the fruit of eternal life as they experience the reality of God's grace. Wow. As you hear the good news of what God has done for you and you understand it, God's word in you changes your heart and the gospel bears the fruit of eternal life in you. Amen? So that's, that's why I want to encourage us. Let us perceive. Let us make an intentional decision to 